World Wide Web is the primary tool used by billions of people to share, read and write information to interact with other people via the internet. World Wide Web made much progress since its advent and in this video we will be sharing what is Web 1, Web 2, Web 3, everything you need to know. But before starting the video, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification icon so you will get notified when we upload the next video. 5. Web 1.0 Web 1.0 refers to the first stage of the World Wide Web evolution. Earlier, there were only a few content creators in Web 1.0 with a huge majority of users who are consumers of content. Personal web pages were common, consisting mainly of static pages hosted on ISP-run web servers or on free web hosting services. In Web 1.0, advertisements on websites while surfing the internet are banned. Also in Web 1.0, Ophoto is an online digital photography website on which users could store, share, view and print digital pictures. Web 1.0 is a content delivery network CDN, that enables the showcase of the piece of information on the websites. It can be used as a personal website. It costs the user as per page is viewed. It has directories that enable users to retrieve a particular piece of information. Four design essentials of a Web 1.0 site include static pages, content is served from the server's file system, pages built using server side includes or common gateway interface CGI, frames and tables are used to position and align the elements on a page. It was used for representation of static content and thus added a lot of professionalism in the work of writers, authors, etc. A publisher could use web for displaying the information and the user can easily get access to this information by visiting the publisher's website. Thus, this stage is also known as the early stage of the evolution of web. During this period, only text mails could be written and sent. One could not upload or attach any images or pictures. 4. Web 2.0 Web 2.0 refers to worldwide websites which highlight user-generated content, usability and interoperability for end users. Web 2.0 is also called the participative social web. It does not refer to a modification to any technical specification, but to modify the way web pages are designed and used. The transition is beneficial, but it does not seem that when the changes occur. Interaction and collaboration with each other are allowed by Web 2.0 in a social media dialogue as the creator of user-generated content in a virtual community. Web 1.0 is an enhanced version of Web 2.0. The web browser technologies are used in Web 2.0 development and it includes Ajax and JavaScript frameworks. Recently, Ajax and JavaScript frameworks have become a very popular means of creating Web 2.0 sites. Five major features of Web 2.0 Free sorting of information Permits users to retrieve and classify the information collectively Dynamic content that is responsive to user input Information flows between the site owner and site users by means of evaluation and online commenting Developed APIs to allow self-usage, such as by a software application Web access leads to concern different, from the traditional internet user base to a wider variety of users Usage of Web 2.0 The social web contains a number of online tools and platforms where people share their perspectives, opinions, thoughts and experiences. Web 2.0 applications tend to interact much more with the end user. 3. Web 3.0 It refers to the evolution of web utilization and interaction which includes altering the web into a database. It enables the upgradation of the back end of the web after a long time of focus on the front end. Web 2.0 has mainly been about Ajax, tagging and another front end user experience innovation. Web 3.0 is a term that is used to describe many evolutions of web usage and interaction among several paths. In this, data isn't owned but instead shared, where services show different views for the same web, the same data. The Semantic Web 3.0 promises to establish the world's information in a more reasonable way than Google can ever attain with their existing engine schema. 2. What are the major differences among Web 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0? Here we would like to talk about the major differences among Web 1.0, 2.0 and Web 3.0. 
Web 1.0, Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 are all different stages of the internet. These are buzzwords, thus lack clear definitions. However, Web 1.0 can be associated with the era of static websites. Web 2.0 can be associated with the era of interactive websites. Web 3.0 focuses on web services and semantic markup. Web has influenced our lives in a great way. The introduction of web and its current form has seen various phases. Broadly, these phases have been categorised into three groups, namely Web 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. Web 1.0 It is the readable phrase of the World Wide Web with flat data. In Web 1.0, there is only limited interaction between sites and web users. Web 1.0 is simply an information portal where users passively receive information without being given the opportunity to post reviews, comments and feedback. Web 2.0 It is the writable phrase of the World Wide Web with interactive data. Unlike Web 1.0, Web 2.0 facilitates interaction between web users and sites, so it allows users to interact more freely with each other. Web 2.0 encourages participation, collaboration and information sharing. Examples of Web 2.0 applications are YouTube, Wiki, Flickr, Facebook and so on. Web 3.0 It is the executable phrase of the World Wide Web with dynamic applications, interactive services and machine-to-machine -machine interaction. Web 3.0 is a semantic web which refers to the future. In Web 3.0, computers can interpret information like humans and intelligently generate and distribute useful content tailored to the needs of users. One example of Web 3.0 is TiVo, a digital video recorder. Its recording program can search the web and read what it finds to you based on your preferences. What's important is that the naming conventions Web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 should not be taken too seriously. Just because a website does not employ Web 2.0 features does not make it obsolete. After all, a small e-commerce site trying to sell niche products may not have a business need for users to submit content or to be able to interact with each other. Moreover, that small e-commerce site does not need to upgrade anything, such as new software. Web 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0 are abstract ideas. They describe challenges that developers and users face on the web and how to address them. 1. Conclusion The web offers so many opportunities to people with disabilities that are unavailable through any other medium. It offers independence and freedom. However, if a website is not created with web accessibility in mind, it may exclude a segment of the population that stands to gain the most from the internet. Most people do not intend to exclude people with disabilities. As organisations and designers become aware of and implement accessibility, they will ensure their content can be accessed by a broader population. The semantic web, Web 3.0, promises to organise the world's information in a dramatically more logical way than Google can ever achieve with their current engine design. This is especially true from the point of view of machine comprehension, as opposed to human comprehension. The semantic web requires the use of a declarative ontological language like OWL to produce domain-specific ontologies that machines can use to reason about information and make new conclusions, not simply match keywords. The effects of Web 2.0 are far-reaching. Like all paradigm shifts, it affects the people who use it socially, culturally and even politically. One of the most affected groups is the designers and developers who will be building it, not just because their technical skills will change, but also because they will need to treat content as part of a unified whole, an ecosystem if you will, and not just an island. First, knowledge of all kinds gets represented in a form that is interpretable both by people and machines. Second, different forms of language in which knowledge is expressed begin to be interrelated and made interchangeable with each other. Third, when knowledge is encoded in a semantic form, it becomes transparent and accessible at any time to a variety of reasoning engines. Do let us know in the comments how many days you guys spend on the web. Thanks for watching.